Hello and welcome to WaveScan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written in Indianapolis by Dr. Adrian Peterson and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on WaveScan, focus on Africa, the Mozambique radio story from Colin Miller in Canada, our Bangladesh DX report, and other shortwave news. WaveScan presents Focus on Africa, a year-long series of reports about shortwave broadcasting and listening on the African continent. And our focus today is on the story of radio in Mozambique. Our thanks to Colin Miller in Sarnia, Ontario, who wrote this story in 1996 and sent it to us for inclusion in WaveScan. When the Portuguese navigator Vasco da Gama discovered the coast of Mozambique in 1498, little did he realize that a few centuries later, this land would be one of Portugal's largest and richest colonies. In the 16th and 17th centuries, an extensive coastal trade in gold and ivory was developed with the Arabs, who had already established settlements along the East African coast. It was for many years one of the unhealthiest places in Africa, being notorious for fever and a bad climate. In 1544, the explorer Lorenzo Marques visited the territory around Delagoa Bay and built fortifications at the site of the city that was later named after him. The Dutch set up a trading post here in 1721, the first attempt at a permanent settlement. The real growth of Lorenzo Marcus was stimulated by the construction of the railroad to South Africa just over a century ago. It was for many years a popular holiday resort for South Africans, and the luxurious Polana Hotel provided a continental atmosphere. Lorenzo Marcus is known as Maputo today. The population is over a million. Mozambique has a total land area of 309,494 square miles, at a population of more than 17 million. It lies along the southeast coast of Africa, and it is bounded by the Indian Ocean on the east, Tanzania in the north, Malawi and Zambia in the northwest, Zimbabwe and Swaziland in the west, and South Africa in the west and south. It consists of coastal lowlands and high mountains in the northwest. Part of Lake Malawi lies along the northwest border. Ethnically, the population can be divided into three groups. The Tonga group lives south of the Save or Sabi River. Between the Save and Zambezi is the Karanga group. The Nyanja inhabit the northwestern part of Mozambique. The Limpopo, Save, and Zambezi are the main rivers. It is mainly an agricultural country, and sugarcane, cashew nuts, and shrimp are the major products. Broadcasting began in Portuguese East Africa on March 18, 1933, when a small station opened in Lorenzo Marques. The following year, C.J. McCary, a South African, made plans to start a broadcasting service to South Africa. When the Radio Clube de Mozambique was founded in 1935, listeners in South Africa tuned in to the familiar Portuguese voices announcing... Aqui, Lourenço Marques, Rádio Clube de Moçambique, transmitindo em ondas curtas. This is the Radio Club of Moçambique. The station, affectionately known as LM, presented most programs in English, and a few in Afrikaans, with popular music and entertainment predominating. When the Portuguese government gave McCary the right to sell advertising on the air, LM introduced commercial radio to Southern Africa. A spiral staircase on a plane? Yes, there's one between first class and the plush penthouse lounge aboard every SAA jumbo. We fly your way, SAA. Colonel Richard L. Meyer had been associated with the International Broadcasting Company of London. This company operated English stations and Radio Toulouse, Radio Lyon, and Radio Normandie in France. 
1947, he took over the management of LM Radio in association with John Davenport, later an executive of the Reader's Digest Association, and beamed this highly successful commercial radio service into South Africa. In 1948, Anything Goes, one of the first South African-produced radio variety shows, was recorded by Charles Berman, produced and hosted by Peter Merrill, scripted by Monty Doyle, and featuring Dan Hill and his orchestra, not to be confused with the Toronto-born singer-songwriter, and other well-known entertainment personalities in South Africa. These celebrities provided many subsequent radio productions, especially after the birth of Springbok Radio, the first commercial station on South African soil in 1950. Anything Goes was recorded in front of a live audience in the 20th Century Theater in Johannesburg for broadcast on LM Radio. The show proved to be so popular that at one performance in 1949, 4,000 people surged into the theater, breaking the large glass entrance doors. Another program at that time, This Is How, provided household hints and other information for housewives, as well as contests with prizes of hampers of sponsors' products. This period was the golden era of radio in the region. One of the most popular programs for many years was Lucky Dip, where listeners sent in music requests and dedications for broadcast. One of the most popular broadcasters on the station at that time was David Davies, the man with the golden voice. To those of you on board the ships of the seven seas, fair winds, fine weather, and a good passage. To those who guard the lighthouses of our sea-washed shores, may your night proceed peacefully, immune from fog. To the police force on never-ending duty, our thoughts are with you during your constant vigil. David Davies there with a good night message on LM Radio. When rock and roll was beginning to make its presence felt in the 50s, it was quite common to hear requests from various fan clubs. For instance, Elvis Presley, Pat Boone, and Cliff Richard. You would often hear anonymous requests to Cindy from You Know Who. At the end of the show, a draw was made with prizes of gift certificates for record singles. And the kids were not forgotten either. Each afternoon at 4 o'clock, there was a program of birthday greetings and music requests, followed by serials such as Superman and specialty shows for the youngsters. Also in the 50s, new transmitters were added, and a separate service was available with religious programming during the evening on a frequency in the 60-meter band. This featured various American syndicated programs like Back to the Bible, Hour of Decision, and The World Tomorrow. During that period, LM Radio carried out a series of stereo tests on shortwave. These were the first such tests in southern Africa, and to my knowledge, Colin says, the first on shortwave in the world. Two frequencies were used in the 60-meter band, one for the left channel and the other for the right this meant that you had to have two separate receivers to achieve the stereo effect. Not too many households had more than one radio in those days, as transistor radios were only just coming on the market. I was one of the unfortunate ones, Colin says, who could not enjoy the program in stereo. I had to flick back and forth between the two frequencies, but couldn't make much sense of it. The program included a short drama presentation with some dialogue between two people and either a ping-pong or a tennis game. The station underwent a major program change in the late 50s, as the new trends in music were attracting the younger set. The block programming was replaced by DJs playing rock and roll and teen beat music. LM was becoming more popular than Springbok Radio in South Africa, especially for teenagers and young adults. This continued into the 60s and 70s. But political changes were to put an end to this, and the radio station was handed over to the armed forces. LM Radio had been under SABC control since 1972, and relays of the station began on local medium wave transmitters in South Africa. On June 25, 1975, independence was achieved from Portugal, and the Rádio Clube de Mozambique was renamed Radio Mozambique, and it became state controlled. On October 12th, the LM Radio facilities were nationalized, and the existing station finally closed moving to Johannesburg as Radio 5.
This is LM Radio. LM Radio is now closing down after 39 years of broadcasting from Lorenzo Marx. For us, it has been 39 happy years, and we wish LM Radio's successor, Radio 5, long life and many happy days. Tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., Radio 5 programs will be broadcast on the medium wave band on all frequencies currently carrying LM Radio. Of course, during the years that LM Radio was on the air, RCM also operated a domestic Portuguese service. This was also heard clearly in South Africa and provided a radio service for the large Portuguese community there. At one time, RCM was operating up to four program services, including LM Radio. Aqui em Moçambique fala-vos o Rádio Clube em Lourenço Marques, transmitindo em ondas curtas e médias. Shortwave regional stations were opened in the 50s in Mozambique at Nampula, Kelamane and Porto Amelia, now Pemba. These stations broadcast in Portuguese as well as in local vernaculars. In June 1969, the Dondo station opened near Beira with two 10 kilowatt one 25-kilowatt and one 100-kilowatt shortwave transmitters, as well as one 50-kilowatt and two 10-kilowatt medium-wave transmitters. At least one of the shortwave units was still operating on 3370 and 9637 kilohertz in 1996. During the Portuguese colonial period, a few independent private stations were on the air. All of these were nationalized in 1975 when the new government came to power. Emisora do Aeroclube da Beira, a commercial station operated by the Air Club of Beira, was on the air in the late 40s using a 300-watt shortwave transmitter with the call CR7IB. By 1958, the power had been increased to 5 kilowatts. Radio Pax, also located in Beira, opened in 1955. It was a religious station operated by the Franciscan Fathers. It used two low-power shortwave transmitters with the calls CR7RA and CR7RB. The power was also later increased. In 1968, Radio Mocidade, or Radio Youth, a station for students, was inaugurated on a low-power medium-wave transmitter in Lorenzo Marques. It was owned and operated by the Portuguese Youth Organization and operated on an irregular schedule. As part of its nationalistic policy, the government changed the names of various towns in 1976 to reflect the new African rule. Lorenzo Marques was renamed Maputo. In 1977, a new interval signal was introduced on Radio Mozambique, consisting of an indigenous musical instrument, the mbira, similar to a xylophone. <laughs> wasn't the interval signal, but that's what the Mbira sounds like. In the years following independence, Radio Mozambique introduced an external service, broadcasting for a few hours each day in English to South Africa and what was then Rhodesia. The service was still on the air in 1996, although the new political situation in the region changed the program content. As with so many third world countries, broadcasting facilities deteriorated because spare parts were difficult to obtain. Transmitters either broke down or were not operating properly. Some drifted in frequency. I can remember, Colin says, one occasion when one of the Maputo transmitters drifted on to that of another Maputo program, causing interference. Radio Mozambique, being a public company, has been facing severe financial difficulties in more recent time. One of Radio Mozambique's transmitters in Maputo began carrying the BBC Portuguese service in May 1996. Frequencies on the air were Maputo probably on medium wave 738 kHz with 50 kilowatts, and on short wave 3210 kHz with 10 kilowatts, 3338 kHz with 10 kilowatts, 6111 kHz with 10 kilowatts, and perhaps 15290 kHz with 120 kilowatts. 
According to a BBC monitoring report, Manuel Veterano, chairman of the station's board of directors, indicated that 12 out of the 15 shortwave transmitters were off the air. As a result, the domestic service was only audible in the southern part of the country. Stations that still seem to be active on shortwave were Emisora Provincial de Sofala in Beira, officially scheduled at 0200 to 0500 and 1500 to 2200 UTC on 3370 kHz variable and 0250 to 2255 UTC on 9637 kHz variable. Emisao Nacional in Maputo, officially scheduled at 0700 to 1500 on 15291 kHz variable, and Emisora Interprovincial de Maputo on 4921.2 kHz from 0250 Sinon. And that article was written by Colin Miller and submitted to Wavescan. We have an update on LM Radio, and this comes to us from Chris Turner, who... Uh, manages a website called www.lmradio.org. And it's a very interesting site with a lot of historic information about LM Radio. And the audio examples that we've brought to you on today's WaveScan come to you from that website, www.lmradio.org. Well, Chris Turner tells us that uh, uh, LM Radio was revived in December 2009, and it's currently broadcasting on FM in Maputo and also on FM in Maseru, the capital of Lesotho. He says we're planning to undertake some shortwave trials using DRM during the course of 2014. So, that may not be the last of LM Radio on shortwave. Now here is the Portuguese national anthem, a portuguesa, as performed by the Radio Clube de Mozambique Orchestra. Listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Send your comments and reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, in the United States. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, in the USA. Or you can email us at WaveScan at awr.org Our email once again wavescan at awr.org Next on Wavescan, let's go to Bangladesh. Here's Salahuddin Dolar with his monthly DX report. Dear listeners and radio hobbyists, welcome you in the July edition of Bangladesh DX report in Wavescan. This is Salahuddin Dolar from Russia in Bangladesh, glad to be back and thanks for listening. Let's start. Recession log for July 2013, 7th July. CGC, the voice Asia at 0900 to 0920 UTC in Hindi on 13630 kHz. The ISIO rating was 333. Radio Saudi Arabia at 0920 to 0930 UTC in Arabic on 17570 kHz, the SIO rating was 444. 
Bangladesh Data Domestic Service at 0900 UTC in Bangla on 4750 kHz, the SIO rating was 333. 8 July, China Radio International at 0930 to 0955 UTC in English on 15 to 70 kHz, the SIO rating was 333. ECDC Manila at 100 to 1010 UTC in Southern Bay on 15640 kHz, the SIO rating was 555. Radio Taiwan International on 1010 to 1020 UTC on 15 to 70 kHz, the SIO rating was 333. Sri Lankan Broadcasting Corporation at 1115 to 1130 UTC in Hindi on 9720 kHz, the SIO rating was 444. July 9th, All India Radio at 1000 to 1020 UTC in English on 17510 kHz, the SIO rating was 343. Radio Taiwan International at 1020 to 1030 UTC in Chinese on 7385 kHz, the SIO rating was 433. July 10th, Radio Japan at 1015 to 1030 UTC in Japanese on 11815 kHz, the SIO rating was 222. Khamar Post Radio at 1030 to 1040 UTC in Khmer on 9960 kHz, the SIO rating was 222. July 14, Radio Tehran at 1030 to 1045 UTC in English on 21640 kHz, the SIO rating was 444. Radio Japan at 1040 to 1100 UTC in Burmese on 11740 kHz. The SIO rating was 444. July 15, FEBC Manila at 1100 to 1130 UTC in Vietnamese on 9855 kHz. The SIO rating was 444. ACJB Australia at 1130 to 1145 UTC in English on 15340 kHz. The SIO rating was 333. Bangladesh DX team will issue a QSL card for the correct reception report of this segment in OAB scan. Please send your reception report to the following address dxbangla at gmail.com. Okay, I will come with more TX news in the next edition. Till then, take care. Salahuddin Dollar, Rajshahi, Bangladesh. Well, thank you very much, Salahuddin. And uh, we want to mention that Salahuddin's wife, Kamrun Nahar Sheila, gave birth to a son on the 19th of June, 2013. He is their first baby. And by the way, you can see their marriage picture of Salahuddin and his wife on the WRMI website, wrmi.net. Their new son's name is Muhammad Kishawar Hassan Shad. Please pray for him, says Salahuddin. I wish my child will be a DXer, like both of his parents, and contribute to WaveScan. Well, we do too. Thanks very much. You remember we told you about the test transmission of KVOH, the Voice of Hope, from Los Angeles on June 29th on 17775 kilohertz. Well, they want to thank all those who responded to that test broadcast. It was unfortunate that the time chosen for the test happened to coincide with a geomagnetic storm. But in spite of that, reports were received from 13 U.S. states, as well as from Canada, Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Argentina, and Indonesia. They ran another, another test transmission on Sunday, July 7th, from 17 to 1900 UTC, also on 17775 kilohertz, and they are expecting to be able to launch a preliminary two-hour daily schedule around the end of the month of July, and will build up from there, says Ray Robinson, their operations manager from Los Angeles. And by the way, Ray sent me a very nice KVOH QSL card. 
for my report on that June 29th test transmission. If you want to get one, keep tuning in to 17775 and uh, you'll hear them in the coming weeks. Sintonía Libre. The program Sintonía Libre, a DX program there from Radio Educación in Mexico on 6185 kilohertz. Now, Radio Educación, along with Juan José Miros, are organizing the 19th annual Mexican DX meeting uh, this weekend in Mexico City, the 18th, 19th, and 20th of July. So we want to send our best greetings to all of the shortwave listeners and DXers who are gathered in Mexico City at the Mexican DX meeting. And both uh, myself and our WaveScan producer, Adrian Peterson, have had the opportunity to attend some of these uh, Mexican DX meetings in past years, and they were always a lot of fun and very interesting. Music from Mozambique ends today's edition of WaveScan, the duo Willy and Anibal with Medrava Yamamana. I want to remind you about our annual WaveScan contest, which is running during this month of July. There are five requirements if you want to participate in the contest, A through E. A, list your five best QSLs from Africa and state briefly why they are your five best. Part B, photocopy your five best QSLs from Africa and send along those copies. Part C, list your five most wanted QSLs from Africa. Part D, send along three reception reports of Adventist World Radio relay stations in Africa or AWR relay stations broadcasting to Africa. And finally, Part E, send along, if you can, three related radio-related postcards for the Indianapolis collection. And the address we'll give you in just a moment. Thanks for listening to WaveScan, the International DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written by Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis. Next week, 100 Years of Wireless and Radio in Bulgaria, Part 7, Unusual Relay Services. We'll also have Tribute to Family Radio Shortwave, Part 3, The Early Years in Boston, and our Australian DX Report. If you'd like a WaveScan QSL card, and if you'd like to take part in the annual DX contest, the address is WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. You can email us at WaveScan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr.org. I'm Jeff White at WRLI in Miami. Till next week, good listening. Titanta kama jungu la manene